First reading, a reading from the book of Pistol, chapter 1, verses 13 to 15, and chapter 2, verses 23 to 24. God did not make death, nor does he rejoice in the destruction of the living, for he fashioned all things that they might have been, and the creatures of the world are wholesome, and there is not a destructive drug among them, nor any domain of the netherworld on earth. For justice is undying. For God formed man to be imperishable. The image of his own nature he made him. But by the envy of the devil, death entered the world, and they who belong to his company experience it. The word of the Lord. Second reading. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Chapter 8, verse 7, verse 9. Chapter 13, verse 15 Brothers and sisters, as you excel in every respect, in faith, discourse, knowledge, all earnestness, and in the love we have for you, may you excel in this gracious act also. For you know the gracious act of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich for your sake, he became poor, so that by his poverty you might become rich. Not that others should have relief while you are burdened, but that as matter of equality, your abundance at the present time should supply their needs, so that their abundance may also supply your needs, that there may be equality, as it is written, Whoever had much did not have more, and whoever had little did not have less. The Word of the Lord A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark When Jesus had crossed again in the boat to the other side, a large crowd gathered around him, and he stayed close to the sea. One of the synagogue officials named Jairus came forward. Seeing him, he fell at his feet and pleaded earnestly with him, saying, My daughter is at the point of death. Please come, lay your hand on her, that she may get well and live. He went off with him, and a large crowd followed him and pressed upon him. There was a woman afflicted with hemorrhages for twelve years. She had suffered greatly at the hands of many doctors, and had spent all that she had, yet she was not helped, but only grew worse. She had heard about Jesus and came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak. She said, If I but touch his clothes, I shall be cured. Immediately her flow of blood dried up. She felt in her body that she was healed of her affliction. Jesus, aware at once that power had gone out of him, turned around in the crowd and asked, Who has touched my clothes? But his disciples said to Jesus, You see how the crowd is pressing upon you, and yet you ask, Who touched me? And he looked around to see who had done it. The woman, realizing what had happened to her, approached in fear and trembling. She fell down before Jesus and told him the whole truth. He said to her daughter, Your faith has saved you. Go in peace and be cured of your affliction. While he was still speaking, people from the synagogue official's house arrived and said, Your daughter has died. Why trouble the teacher any longer? Disregarding the message that was reported, Jesus said to the synagogue official, Do not be afraid. Just have faith. He did not allow anyone to accompany him inside, except Peter, James, and John, and brother of James. 
When they arrived at the house of the synagogue officials, he caught sight of commotion, people weeping and wailing loudly. So he went in and said to them, Why this commotion and weeping? The child is not dead but asleep. And they ridiculed him. Then he put them all out. He took along the child's father and mother and those who were with him and entered the room where the child was. He took the child by the hand and said to her, Talithakum, which means, Little girl, I say to you, arise. The girl, a child of twelve, arose immediately and walked around. At that they were utterly astounded. He gave strict orders that no one should know this, and said that she should be given something to eat. The Gospel of the Lord. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, my dear children, and my dear young generation, today, Sunday, 27th of June, the Gospel for today's reflection of the Mass is taken from Mark chapter 5, verses 21 to 43. Here we come across two different people, two different persons, if you want to call them. One is a leader of a community, a father who cries for the liberation, for the healing of his daughter. And he's, he were, he's a respected man. But Jesus sees his humility. Jesus sees him on his knees and he cries for the daughter. Jesus sees his desperate. And Jesus listens to him. And on his way to heal the daughter of Jairus, the leader of the community of the synagogue, we come across a woman who has suffered 12 long years of bleeding, hemorrhage. And she now comes and she touches the cloak of Jesus while he was on his way. And this shows two different approaches. The leader of the synagogue in public on his knees, he cries for the daughter and he expresses his faith. And the other example of the woman, and she was so frightened. She did not want to come forward because she is considered as an impure person in the Old Testament. She goes and she touches the cloak. Her faith expressed in a very subtle, humble and hidden way. In the first case, Jesus listens. In the second case, Jesus feels that the power has gone out of him. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, my dear children and my dear young generation, we have a master, we have a Lord, we have Jesus who listens and who feels the need of the people. He comes to rescue us. He comes to liberate us. He comes to heal us whenever we express our faith in public or in our hidden way of expression. Frightened because of the impurity, but her faith goes beyond limits. And her faith goes beyond the limit of public scandal, her own impurity. Therefore, let us pray to the Lord. Let us open ourselves because the Lord listens to us and the Lord feels our need and He heals us.